A lot of times people will ask me like, where did you learn this or how did you learn that? And like, how did you get here? And it's such a complicated web that I've weaved throughout these years. Um, the majority of it comes through communication, talking with your buddies, getting to know people in the industry and becoming relatable. I think that's one of the biggest things is to be relatable and not get, as like my dad would say, too big for your britches. You, you gotta stay humble and relatable and be the guy that people wanna talk to. You're not going to get any information given to you if you are unrelatable or if you're hard to talk to. So I think that's sort of been one of the greatest things that I've learned over the years is like, talk to your fans, talk to people in the industry. Like you have to, you have to be sort of extroverted even if you have a hard time with it in real life. Um, these relationships that we make along the way are the thing, they're the stepping stones that get us through all of this. Like I was 17 years old getting into this car club that was like the cream of the crop, the best mini trucks in the country. And uh, you know, it's intimidating when you get into a scene like that. But now 25, 28 years later, some of those guys are some of my best friends. I mean, it's, it's crazy how the world works that way. And it, it's good to make sure you keep the friendships alive, keep the communication open, and it's what will take you into the next, the next chapter in your life. I mean, I have guys right now that I'm able to call, and even though I'm just building stuff in my backyard, I'm able to call some of my friends and be like, hey, like I need a little hand with this Jeep or I need something to get me through on this project. And it's like having the contacts and like keeping your communication open and continuing these friendships, those are like, those are where it's at. It, it goes to show like how big something can become like a little little YouTube show and then become this huge thing on Motor Trend and cable TV. And it's not because Fred and I were extremely good at what we do. It's because we've sort of be, we've learned how to communicate on camera and with friends in the industry and get sponsors and things like that to sort of help move the thing and keep it growing. I'm sure a few of you have heard that Dirt Every Day got canceled. Um, that was a pretty big hit to me as well as Fred, I know that. Uh, but we couldn't have made it that 11 seasons, 10 years, 138 episodes without support from guys and gals like you. The amount of support that we got after the news broke was unreal. We have always sort of had this like dirt head club that Fred and I have sort of it's a pseudo club that actually it does exist now because of the fans and the people that watch dirt every day so everybody out there that supported that show for so long you guys are all the dirt heads my automotive passion kind of started probably in 95 1995 that was about when it began i was into bicycles like my entire childhood. I spent every day, every afternoon, riding bikes, building jumps, like that was it until I was 15. When I turned 15, that meant my buddies were all turning 16 and it was time to start working on their rigs. The first rig I ever worked on was my buddy Wes's 1982 Isuzu Pup. And I lowered that thing with some lowering blocks in the back and cranked the torsion bars in the front uh, it was probably a job that should have taken an hour and I think it took Wes and I and four other people from the complex probably an afternoon or a whole weekend. But we ended up lowering this little Isuzu truck and that sort of steamrolled into my first car which was a lowered Nissan Sentra. All my buddies having lowered pickups and uh, that was it, man. High school was some good years for building custom cars and getting into that whole scene. Um, 
fast forward from that after like the the cheap cars that we were driving in high school i was able to get into a 93 toyota pickup and that one was the start of fabrication for me um, I basically was going to college and I was changing oil at Saturn and then at night I was going and working for a fab shop called The Chop Shop and basically did trade work for a bunch of work that we did on the Toyota and I worked there for nine months throughout my college years and that was sort of the intro into fabrication and custom and customizing and welding and all that. The customs took me all the way up until probably 05, and that's when I got my first Jeep. I had been around all the cars and customizing for so long, and I had a shop at that point where I was building, building stuff for other people. Um, and that was sort of the same time frame we started going camping in the desert and hanging out with some of my other friends. Started hanging out and camping in the desert with my friend Jeff, and he had a little CJ7. So that was sort of my intro into Jeeps. I went out to the desert camping, and I was like, ah, oh, the CJ7 is really cool. You can watch it flex and articulate and get traction. And at that point, I was kind of tired of, I was kind of tired of building lowriders and just have them go and park in a parking lot and lay, lay down, and that was it. That was all the car did. It would drive to a parking lot and lower down, and. It was like, well, that's cool, but I just did all this work and all this fabrication and suspension design, and now it's just sitting in a parking lot. So I took that mentality of building crazy suspensions and using airbags in the process, and I built my, my uh, 88 Jeep Comanche. Yeah, built my 88 Jeep Comanche, and that was, that was it. It was airbagged and four-linked in the rear. I actually tried buying a lift kit for it, and the first trip out, I broke all kinds of parts, and I was like, I can do better than this. So that was my intro into uh, off-roading, 88 Jeep Comanche, going desert camping, had my my girlfriend at the time and a dog, and that ended up being a wife and a dog and two kids, and then the Comanche wasn't big enough, so we had to get move on to SUVs. So I guess, I had already been working with other friends in the magazine industry. I had friends who were in mini trucking magazine. I'd worked with a couple guys in some of the hot rod magazines. And then I was, I was all in on this off-road scene, but I didn't know anybody. You like fast forward from that a little bit, and I'd, uh, I became friends with a guy named Tommy Boyd, Tom Boyd. He's the craziest dude you ever met. He's been on Ultimate Adventure as many times as anybody. Uh, he actually, he's been on more than anybody. Well, he rolls up and he's in a BMW with a poison spider sticker on the fender. And I'm like, what do you know about poison spider? Why are you in a BMW with off-road stickers on your thing? And then it was all over from there. He was friends with all the off-road guys. He was friends with the guys at the Jeep magazines. He was friends with the guys on Ultimate Adventure. And he's the one who introduced me to Fred. Fred was the editor-in-chief of Peterson's Four Wheel and Off-Road at the time, and he and I became fast friends. I was doing tech articles for the magazine, helping him out with rigs that he owned, and basically the friendship just evolved like really quick. He and I were like best buddies, texting each other every day. He was, he was coming down to San Diego, where I was at at the time. We would build a roll cage in a Jeep and throw that up in the magazine. And then I think the, the real stepping stone for me was when I got a chance to do the exhaust on the Ultimate Adventure, uh, the main vehicle for Ultimate Adventure in 2010. Um, it was a CJ7, aluminum tub CJ7 that Rick Payway owns now. And Fred was building it for Rick at the time. And I was able to get my foot in the door with that. And that sort of spiraled everything out of control. After the UA thing happened, um, or after I was able to do that exhaust work on the UA rig, I would kind of got my foot in the door. I was able to weasel my way onto Ultimate Adventure 2010 by going along with Tommy, prepping his rig and hauling it all the way across country. So that was sort of my, my stepping stone into Ultimate Adventure. Shortly after that, Fred's 
spun off of the magazine side of things and he started a little video thing called Dirt Every Day. And that was basically, it was just a spinoff that the magazine guys were kind of doing and putting over on YouTube. Um, so he had that Dirt Every Day thing rolling for a couple of years and then they were like, you know what, Fred, you probably should get a co-host. And Fred was like, Fred called me up and he's like, hey dude, do you want to co-host Dirt Every Day with me so that they don't pick some guy that I don't really want to hang out with? And I was like, yeah, I don't care. So there it is. I guess uh, that was, a, I don't know, that was a long time ago. But I think right around that time was Mad Max's Off-Road Runner. And you know what's rad? My first kind of full-time gig on Dirt Every Day was getting to build a mini truck lowered mini truck ford courier and jumping it off a tabletop in the desert it was amazing so it's pretty neat like right out of the box i was able to take these multi-faceted things that i enjoy like mini trucks and off-roading and low riders and cram it all into this cool little show called dirt every day so we were going strong 11 seasons in and this last season i think was amazing i mean we got a chance to build a toyota turned into a ranchero and then modified into a monster truck i mean we did some crazy builds uh we we started the season off with like building my mom's spaghetti truck this crazy like old 90s ford pickup um the whole season was just killer episode after killer episode so when we went into this meeting for season 12 thinking that it was going to be the green light and they were like sorry it was a good run but we're not going to be doing that anymore fred and i were just like what just happened like how did that happen i don't know um it was a hard hit but it's sort of looking back i'm like you know what we did 138 episodes and kept it fresh the entire time so I kind of feel like it was a hard hit to take but we kind of went out on top in my opinion I feel like this realm that I'm in right here the TV thing or the YouTube thing the video thing is really where I can shine as far as being a craftsman or a fabricator or whatever you want to call it. Basically, I'm a maker of things. I really had a hard time in real life with running a shop and just selling labor and paying my bills. And when you're selling labor, it's like it can be good, but you're never going to get rich doing it. Um, as soon as I was able to like shake that chasing that dollar and like trading that hour for a dollar, I was able to like start doing the fabrication and stuff, the building that I wanted to do. I feel like this is where that type of work shines. Like I can take and show you the idea of how to use that tubing bender and you can take that and use it in whatever form that you want to. I can teach you how to use it under the, in building a bumper, but if you need to use that information for building a roll cage or building a handrail, for an apartment complex like it's all just good useful information and I feel like this is my time to take all this information that's in my head and be able to give it to you guys and let you run with it um, I feel like now's the time and the the amount of space is running out so I feel like I gotta like give it away give away some of this information so that I can keep learning you know there is no other time than now. It is time to take this thing, the shop that I have and these tools I have and this knowledge and figure out how to use it to my advantage and pass on as much of this information I have to you guys. I couldn't have got here without support from fans like you and viewers like you. And I really hope that you stick around and keep watching. I hope you can push through my bad editing and my bad camera work and probably rambling on, but I think we can make this thing grow and become something great. Um, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see where this is going in a year from now or two years or three years or wherever we end up. Thank you guys so much.